Hello and uh, good evening members of the MMUK annual general meeting. It is good to talk to you in this special way at this uh, annual general meeting. It's a shame that we cannot see each other more often. However, we applaud or we appreciate the sophisticated level of technology the Zoom as it now becomes the enabler to international communications, which though virtually is still helpful. I highly commend you for the invitation to give you a brief address to your annual general meeting. Before going on, may I accord due respect to the chairperson, the secretary, and the members of the MMUK and uh, interested friends. I was not really aware what you might want me to say to you in this address. Well, that is vague. I welcome the freedom to enlighten you at my discretion. That said, I hope I will be informative. First, Mila, I, w I wish to greet you. I convey greetings to you from the Anglican Church of Melanesia, the members of the Council of Bishops, clergy, administrators, and the general laity. Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father. Appreciation. On the outset, let me, on behalf of the Anglican Church of Melanesia, convey to you our deepest acknowledgement for your unwavering support to Melanesia for all that we do together as a mission partners, and that includes moral and uh, spiritual support. On our side, this partnership is, uh, is so valuable, one that we embrace to heart. It is a living partnership that has lived through centuries. It grows stronger with the new emerging issues affecting us, especially us. Our council remain a faithful partner to this historical endeavor. I particularly want to convey our heartfelt appreciation and thank you to, for supporting us recover from the aftermath of Cyclone Harold in June this year. Diocese of uh, Vanuatu, which was mostly affected, is gradually coming back to normal, though Bishop James and his family and the diocesan office are still in temporary residence. We appreciate your ongoing support in this uh, rehabilitation process. It is also important for me to particularly offer words of uh, acknowledgement and thank you to Andrew Cutright for being a trustee of MMUK for the past years. Thank you, Andrew. I understand from Katie that Canon Chain Brook will succeed him, and I take great delight to welcome and congratulate Canon Chain Brook for our appointment. Having met and talked with uh, Canon Chain, I can figure out a growing love and passion for Melanesia. Thank you, and welcome Canon Chain. Let me give you some remarks, first of all, on the COVID-19 situation in Solomon Islands and Vanuatu. As we speak, the two countries maintain their COVID-19 free status. However, <clears throat> nobody can be certain about what tomorrow brings. There are now cases as close as Bougainville in the western border, placing Solomon Islands vulnerable as a high-risk nation. <coughs> In line with the Solomon Islands government, or in that on that line, the Solomon Islands government continues to repatriate nationals and international diplomats, even from China. That weighs further in saying that Solomon Islands is now a high-risk nation. Even with the COVID-19 free status, both countries are reading the socio-economic impacts. More and more employees are losing their jobs as a result of scale down of most private companies and government ministries. While life in Onera appears normal, there is growing unemployment. We are praying that your scientists will quickly result to a vaccine. Second, let me comment on our worship life amidst fear of the ongoing pandemic. Worship life throughout the province remains the same. 
Despite that, there is ongoing awareness on preventive measures in churches and other related gatherings. Lately, the Council of Bishops agreed on a paper outlining possible changes to worship in the unlikely event COVID-19 enters our countries. You know too well how we Melanesian to look at faith. It is what our people are still holding on to. That said, we educate our people to be careful that faith should lead us or to, should lead people to act with responsibility. Third, the climate change issue, as in recent years, topped the chart of issues and our attention until COVID-19 interrupts. COVID-19, however, is an outbreak and will, through the grace and love of God, cease in time. But climate change issues will persist on. Our partnership on this uh, issue, therefore, should remain or maintain momentum, if not uh, further improve. We are well ahead with our response, for example, the setting up of the Environmental Observatory Project in Malaita and Guadalcanal to provide uh, scientific data. At this stage, it is quite too early to have any tangible results from the observatory, resulting from inconsistent data collection due to interruptions by the public state of emergency and the tropical cyclone Harold. We trust our combined effort on this project will continue to bear fruit. Fourthly, <coughs> I have some updates for you on ACOM administration and leadership. On the Episcopal leadership front, Bishop Alfred of Fanato Diocese has officially retired on the 15th August that is last month, and the Bishop Nathan Tome of the Diocese of Guadalcanal will have his liturgical farewell on the 20th of September, being the day of Bishop Patterson. Elections and consecrations for their successors will be done later this year and early next year, respectively. Retirements aside, the, the Diocese of Isabel Synod had uh, given Bishop Ellison an extension of five years in office after his 60th birthday this year. The General Secretary's contract. Having served two terms, I am delighted for, to inform UMMUK that Dr. Hebram Auriasi, the General Secretary of ACOM, has agreed and signed another term of five years. We all appreciate the huge impact Abraham, through his sound knowledge and experiences, humility and uh, thoughtfulness has contributed to our com effectively in administration, operation and uh, training of Green Hands for Finance. General and uh, Diocesan Synods, the global pandemic has disrupted some of our scheduled programs for this year. The General Synod, which was scheduled for November this year, has been deferred to next year. Among with, uh, along with the deferments, five dioceses have also uh, decided to defer their synods to next year. Only four dioceses, despite the health care, have either held their synods or still to host their synods this year. The MV Southern Cross. After almost a year of huge uh, refurbishment work, ACOM's mission flagship, the MV Southern Cross, is now back on mission. According to our finance manager, the refurbishment will cost around $2 million Solomon dollars. We render massive appreciation and acknowledgement to MMTB in Auckland for facilitating resources for the renovation. We hope she can further save ACOM mission for some more years, after which a new and bigger one or bigger vessel can be considered. But as the saying goes, the sooner the better. A com PHQ complex in, complex in Onera. Since uh, vacating the provincial office by the Main Street of Onera in 2019, actual work on the new complex has not yet started. That said, a committee consisting of uh, PHQ staffs has been set up to oversight the initial planning stages. It is going to be a huge project, so we are conscious 
about uh, securing maximum funds and uh, ensure that initial plans are correct. It is our project. It is our. It is hoped that this project will uh, physically take off the ground uh, sometimes next year in 2021. Proposed at John Coleridge Patterson University. I also wish to make a brief comments on the proposed John Coleridge Patterson University. It has been a long overdue project hanging over our cone. It has been going round and round, almost unable to find a, a departure point to a meaningful way forward. However, in terms of academic programs, a diploma in teaching primary program was introduced and is gradually attracting enrollments, not just from ACOM but from other churches. One of the huge steps forward to this uh, program is that South Pacific Commission has agreed to has agreed and granted approval to accredit to do accreditation of the programs offered, and the actual physical uh, development of the university side on Consulan, um, east of Honiara, further inland from TNK, uh, concept implementation plan has been designed, anticipating it as the departure point. According to the document, 80% of the university's uh, income or support aims to be locally generated. This idea considers allowing some hectares of the land for farming. The farm is anticipated to start ahead of the infrastructure developments on the site. Definitely support for tools and machineries for the proposed farm will be welcomed. Finally, reclaiming ACOM Health uh, Ministry. In the early days of ACOM mission, Health Ministry was uh, strongly twinned with education. It somehow lost grip, probably when the government of Solomon Islands and uh, Vanuatu started improving their health services. At the turn of the 21st century, there is a huge realization resonating with the climate change experiences the need to re-engage in this ministry, most probably on a higher level. Uh, to that end, a resolution was made in the 2018 General Synod in Port Vila to revive ACOM's health ministry, first by establishing a position of a health coordinator in the administration office. That has now done, been done and the pioneering work, pioneering work is in place to scout opportunities to gradually roll out this ministry. Sadly, only two clinics survived the decision to surrender health ministry. The Ifefani mm -hmm. Clinic at Fawabu on Malaita and the Sinclair Clinic at Taroniara on Gela. Unfortunately, both clinics are now in uh, dilapidated uh, stages. Closing remarks. With those uh, brief remarks, members, I wish you all God's blessing on your work and our partnership for the Kingdom of God. It is good to talk to you through this uh, recording. Though we missed out a lot on the offers of the face-to-face -face mode of communication, I, may I assure you that ACOM holds you, your families, and the work you do to heart, most especially during this time of extraordinary uncertainty and fear. May God bless your annual general meeting today. May God bless all the trustees, your families, and our partnership in mission. Thank you.